I'm Ari Nessel from the Pollination Project. I'm here with my friend Nora Kramer, uh, who amongst other things is the founder of Youth Empowered Action Camp, who has collaborated many times over the years with the Pollination Project, and in fact is herself a grantee of the Pollination Project. So Nora, could you share a little bit about um, your relationship to the Pollination Project? Yeah, well I remember us meeting, having dinner at a restaurant in Dallas, when you first told me about this idea, it didn't have a name, but you told me about the idea of donating $1,000 a day to individuals who want to bring about change. Um, and you were looking to pilot it, the camp that I run, Yay Camp, we have all these youth activists who are just starting out trying to figure out how they can make a difference in the world. And that's one thing I love about the Pollination Project is you really bet on people. I know the first Pollination Project grantee was one of our campers. And it was just so exciting to, for us, and we still share about the Pollination Project. You know, I think it's very common to work from a place of, we don't have any money, so we can't really do the things that we want to do. And for an individual, who doesn't have any money and wants to get something started for a thousand dollars, that's actually enough to get something started. And um, how beautiful all of the things that have pollinated as a result of Pollination Project's support. Nora, I'm curious when I say the word heartivism, what, what comes to mind uh, for you around that word and how is that distinct from activism at first glance? Mm. I think activism is in some ways agnostic in terms of approach. At Yay Camp, we made up our own definition of the word activism. So you're taking action with an intent to help others, could help yourself as well, but not only yourself, with an eye for the big picture. So you have a context. So if you take a can and put it in the recycle bin, you have a context for the, the significance of that can, the big picture of what happens if the can goes in the wrong bin. Now you could take that can and throw it into the bin and yell at everyone that they should be recycling too, and you're still doing activism. You're taking intentional action to help others with an eye for the big picture. You might not be effective. You might not be doing it in a way that's gonna work. Or be joyful. You certainly might not be doing it. We didn't say anything about being joyful. Right, it's still activism. You could be depressed and burnt out and not effective, but it's still activism according to that definition. I think the idea of heartivism takes activism to the next level, really embodying the big picture. I think activism inherently is coming from the heart because why else would you be helping others? You're taking action to help others. It's way easier to do nothing. One thing I've seen for myself that's been essential to make what I call heartism such a joy mm -hmm. is having a motivation that's about in intrinsic value of my action versus extrinsic value. Mm -hmm. That I do it because this is an expression of my ariness. This is, it feels good to show up this way. Regardless of the, the fruits that arise from the effort, it's so uncertain, the ripples of what we do, mm -hmm. except for one thing where we can have certainty is how are we affected? Mm -hmm. Am I growing as a human being? Am I growing in my capacity to relate to others, to connect to others, mm -hmm. to uh, be in relationship to them in a way that they feel mutually supported mm -hmm. by how I'm showing up? And I feel encouraged and alive and joyful mm -hmm. in what I'm trying to be of service to. Mm. I love that. We think about activists who have been able to affect the change they're hoping to see in the world and have been able to do it for long periods of time. Do you see a commonality among those people? Yeah, I think if you look at some of even the most famous activists in history, let's say Martin Luther King, who now, 50 years later, is seen as you know this great hero, but at the time he was vilified by most white people. And he came from a place of fierce belief and commitment to sharing his, his dream or his vision. But he didn't do it in a way where he was guilting people for not having already agreed with him. 
He didn't do it from a place of telling everyone that they were racist. I mean, they were racist. But him saying it that way was not gonna work. There's a lot of internal work that needs to be done to be able to process the potential anger, sadness, frustration, heartbreak when you learn about injustices in the world or experience them yourself, to not dump that on somebody else for contributing to it. The idea that you can hate or dislike or disagree with something that someone does and separate that from the person, to not say, well, I hate that person, or that's a terrible person because they're doing this terrible thing. And seeing that, you know, there's a lot of good people who just haven't brought haven't brought their actions in alignment with their values yet. And that's all of us to some degree. I'm curious about, um, you were talking about this, the difficulty of being activist and starting to care so much about things mm -hmm. that your heart will eventually or initially be broken mm -hmm. by that care. Mm -hmm. What is the self-care one does so we can be with that suffering, be with the pain. In fact, compassion is often translated as to be with the suffering of others. Mm -hmm. From that place, how do, can we just build our capacity to be with it without being aversion, averse to the pain or to those who are causing it and to be able to be fully present and available to it and be transformed by it and hopefully transform it in the process? I think this is such a key aspect to being an activist is being willing to have your heart broken. You cannot be an activist if you're not coming from a place of hope. Hope is a requirement to be an activist. If you're not hopeful, well, what's the point? Their heart needs to break so that they can connect to how deeply they care about this issue. I think one thing that's so important is for each person to find something that brings them peace and joy and it's different for everyone for some people it's meditation for some people it's exercise for some people it's music or art there's a quote that I love action is the antidote to despair and I think when we take action to bring about change we start to feel good we feel good that we're doing something again that's an act of hope versus doing nothing is an act of hopelessness faith that by me showing up in a certain way that the world is transformed around me. Not necessarily because the world is transformed around me, because the eyes with which I see the world mm. is transformed. Mm -hmm. And I start seeing the possibility mm -hmm. of that the world is, can move in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. And the world can move in a certain direction because I move in a certain direction. Because mm -hmm. in that moment, you can choose to throw up your hands and say, oh, the problems are too big. You know, we have too far to go. How would you like to change the way you show up? And therefore, how would you like activism to change in the process? Mm. So I think we need, first of all, to create an environment that, that people want to join. They want to be, I think, inherently, I think people want to be activists. I think anybody that's not an activist, it's actually because they have lost hope. They don't believe in themselves. They are cynical, they're resigned. They don't see that it's possible to bring about change. Because activism is a natural thing to do. You see that someone is suffering, you have compassion about that, you wanna do something. This is something children do. Children see somebody's homeless and say, mom, he could stay on our couch. Or there's a, you know, animal on the street, let's bring him home. It's a natural state for people to want to help others. So I think as we come from a place of hope and compassion and connect with why we care so much. If we can stick to those values and ideals, we create a movement that is in integrity and that people will want to join. And it's irresistible. And it'll be irresistible.